Welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to share with you four practical steps on how to enter the secret place, particularly in this hour. I don't know if you noticed, there's a shaking going on all over the world. Everything that we trusted in is being shaken. And the world that we knew is no longer the same. We mean to recognize that we are living in the last days and Jesus is coming soon. And it truly is a perilous hour in which to live. And so now more than ever, we need to be found in him, in the secret place of his presence. So join with me as I share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. And I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that this word was such a word in season. Father, we want to see Jesus lifted up. We just want to know you, Jesus. We want to come to you. You are our living hope. Holy Spirit, come and breathe on us. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Open the Word. Give us rich revelation from the Word that penetrates, impacts, changes us. Father, we want your will. We want the bread of your presence. I thank you, Father God, for this Word today. Let Jesus be magnified, glorified in it and through it. We just give you all the worship. And thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Now, in Lamentations 3, verses 24 through 26, it says this, The Lord is my portion. We need to underline that. We need to lay hold of that. And we need to get that so strong in our spirit. The Lord is my portion. And he went on, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is good. We have a good Father who desires to give us good gifts. And the call is for us to come into the presence, the secret place of his presence, and there to receive. God is expecting us to come. And we should come expecting to receive from our good Father, who is giving us and desires to give us everything pertaining to life and godliness for this hour so that we can live strong, have a living hope in Jesus, how to walk in this hour magnifying, glorifying Jesus. In Psalm 62, verse 6, it says, My soul, wait in silence for God, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, I shall not be shaken. I look around the world, and I see, as I've said, everything that we've trusted in is being shaken. But we are called to an unshakable kingdom, which is in Him. And now, as I said, more than ever, you need to make sure that you're found in Him because the shakings are gaining momentum. The birth pangs are gaining intensity and more frequent. And so, as I said, you need to learn how to find a living hope in Jesus, how to press in and be truly found, always secure in the secret place. So how do I do it? Well, number one, is that he must become our salvation, or your salvation more importantly. It has to become personal. And so long as we're able to find a way, make things happen, we do. But in this hour, all those things that we could do in the past are disappearing or failing. Now we must turn to Jesus. And I want to quote from the story of Jacob. In Jacob chapter 32, we see where Jacob is returning back to Canaan. Here's a man that lays a hold of the promise. He was actually called to receive the promise, but he's done everything to gain it by his own uh, doing. He is a trickster. He is a, a sneak. He is a weasel. I mean, there's so many things you could use. He's not a good man in so many ways, but he's a man that's about to be changed. And many of us have had good intentions but it's all been us that's been doing it. And I look at my own personal walk, and we can be serving the Lord, but we're doing it through our ability. And as long as we can make things happen, we do. But Jacob all of a sudden came to the situation. It was no longer just about him, but now he's got his family. He's got his possessions, his, his livestock. And he's returning to an enemy, his brother, who's more uh, able, stronger than him and is totally able to defeat and exact upon Jacob his vengeance. How is Jacob going to press in and enter? And I look at the first thing that Jacob experiences in chapter 32 is an angel. And he sees this encampment of angels around. 
So you look at this, that there's these angels. Many often we say, if I just had an experience, if I just saw an angel, experiences don't produce faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We need to hear him speak in the secret place. As we read the Gospels, we see that it was said of Jesus that he spoke like no one else. Further, when he spoke, he spoke with an authority. He would speak to the, the storm and it was still. He would speak to the waves. They were still. He had such an authority that whatever he said happened. No one else has ever spoke with such absolute authority because it was him that created all things by his words. And we come into the secret place. We hear him speak, speak his word to us with such an authority, with such a life to it that it penetrates and it does something and it causes faith to arise. Jacob sees these angels, but that's not enough. That encounter was not enough. And many people build their lives on experiences, but experiences will fail in the midst of a major crisis. When you are stretched beyond limits, you either have faith and trust that He is your salvation, or you crumble because our experiences are not our salvation, Jesus is. And so we look at this, Smith Wigglesworth said, often you will find that you are left alone. Whether you like it or not, you will be left alone as Jacob was left alone. And there comes a point, and that of course was Genesis 32, 24, then Jacob was left alone. All resources gone. There's no one he can run to. There's no one who can carry him. He has to face this one alone. And it starts by him getting alone and seeking the Lord. And when we come to this place where God, I've got to make connection with you. See, I like when I'm carried at church. I like when I go when other people are praying for me. I like when somebody else can carry the burden for me. But there's an hour and there's a time, particularly in this moment, where we individually must get alone when no one else sees. And we've got to get real and go after the Lord. We've got to seek His face and lay a hold of Him. There's so much at stake. Jacob realized it. Up until now, it was all about him. And it didn't matter. It was just about him. But now he's got his wives. He's got his kids. He's got his possessions. There's so much at stake. If he fails, it's not just him that gets hurt. There's lives. And that's on him. And it's breaking him. And he realizes that he's got to get a hold of someone greater. And the one he knows is greater is the Lord. Who's greater? Who's your salvation? And when you lay hold of that, Jesus is your salvation. He's bigger. He's greater. He is the one that you absolutely must connect with. He is the one that you must hear him speak to you. He is the one that you must lay a hold of in this hour because without him, you fail. Smith said this, his wives could not make atonement for him. His children could not atonement for him. His money was useless to help him. There's nothing else. There's nothing else you can do. There's, you've tried everything and you're out of options. The only thing that's left is, God, I need you. There is no safety net. There's no insurance policy. There is simply laying a hold of Jesus, connecting with him and trusting in him. And if he fails, you go under. He must become your salvation, your only salvation. Number two. He must become your refuge and stronghold. And I quoted that, of course, in Psalm 62. And I like that word stronghold or defense. And it means a high place, a secure place, a retreat. We think about the secret place. We have this image of the Holy of Holies and the temple, and how you have to ascend. It's a high place. It's higher. And I want you to lay hold of, and as you check out the whole series on the secret place, to discover your identity that is in him that you're raised up and seated in the heavenly places. So when I think of him as my refuge, all of a sudden he takes a hold of me, not just bringing me sympathy, but lifting me and bringing me into an inheritance where I'm raised up and seated with him in heavenly places. And I would say to you 
Do not allow that which has been conquered to defeat you. What Jesus conquered through the cross, do not allow that to defeat you. Smith said this, What made Jacob come to that place of loneliness, weakness, and knowledge of himself? What brings us to that place where everything has failed? Everything now calls and demands that we seek his face. Smith said this, He recalled the grace with which God had met him 21 years before. When he saw the ladder and the angels and heard the voice of God, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you, which is Genesis 28, 15. He remembered God's grace and mercy. Now in 2 Peter 1, verse 4, For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. In Hebrews 10, 23, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So I need to remember, the Jews were told to build memorials, that they would remember what God has done for them, because what God's done before, He will do again. You need to have faith to rise. You need to come and remember how God has been faithful with you. We need to stop allowing the enemy to steal. And often he steals and plays with the past and he twists it. And we forget all the great and glorious things that God did. All the deliverances that he brought for you. All the breakthroughs. And that how he's always been faithful towards you. Today, may the Spirit of God remind you remind you and emphasize and strengthen in you the Lordship of Jesus, how Jesus is faithful, how He is Lord, and how you can trust in Him. And may He remind you of where you were when the Lord gave you the breakthrough, of all the things the enemy did, because the enemy loves to change the past like it did with the children of Egypt, or when they were in Egypt. Do you remember the cucumbers and the meat? Liar, liar. The devil always lies and twists. May the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of truth, bring you such a rich revelation, remind you of the good things that Jesus did and of all the lies of the enemy so that we come to this place where we truly are alone, recognizing we need Him, that He is our refuge and our fortress. Smith said this, He also knew that there was only one way of deliverance. What was it? Only God could keep Jacob safe. God had met him 21 years before when he had left home empty-handed. Go back and remember how he stepped in and how he did so great things for you and how you can trust him and how that he is your only solution. He is your only option, but he's a faithful God. He is a great God. Go back into the Word and may the Holy Spirit give you revelation and let those promises speak so loud to you so strong to you that you hear the great heart of the Father towards you, that He's good and He can be trusted and He's faithful. And in this hour where you're in a difficulty, He is your stronghold, He is your refuge. If you will hide in Him in the secret place of His presence, He is good. He's good to those that wait in Him. And Genesis 31, 5, Jacob tells his wives how he's called to return back. His wives, you know, are not happy with that. Of course not. In Genesis 31, 5, And he said to them, I see your father's attitude, and that it's not friendly towards me, but the God of my father has been with me. All of a sudden, Jacob is starting to be changed. He's taken for granted all the things that God has done. He never even paid attention. Now he remembers. Now when God has spoken to him and God has a purpose for him and God wants to use him in a difficult season and we're in a difficult season and you're called and anointed for such a time as this. It doesn't seem like it. But when you get a hold of him in the secret place of his presence, it changes everything. Smith went on to say this, talking regarding Jacob, if I do not get a blessing from God, I can never meet Esau. 
and he made up his mind he would not go until he knew he had the favor with God. I want you to so grab a hold. See, we've been so conditioned. A five-minute prayer. We pray in faith, we believe, we receive, and that's it. And we don't go after the Lord and cling to Him saying, God, I'm not letting go until I've made living contact, until that I know that I know that I've heard your voice, until I know that you said, it's done, until I know that you said, I'm blessed, and it's go. We got to cling to Him, get a hold of Him. This is how you get into the secret place, that holy desperation that, God, I want you. Like Es or like Abraham, um, Jacob here, sorry. I cannot face tomorrow. I cannot face my situations until I connect with you. You are my refuge. You are my strength. You are the defense of my life in this season. We cannot face tomorrow. As a world that's getting darker and darker, we are still called to occupy till he comes. Many of us want to run and hide, but God says, no. You need to stand and shine. But I can't do that in a world where it's shaking. You can if you're secure in me. You can if you lay a hold of me, saith the Lord God. Number three, we must cry out. Psalm 62, 8. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge. And I want to say this, that a lot of time the entrance into the secret place is dripping wet with tears because there is a baptism of tears. There's a crying out. There's a surrendering, a yielding. As Jacob entered, as Jacob wrestled that night, Jacob faced Jacob and he was changed. He saw the person that he was and often God begins to reveal the person that we were. Smith said this, Alone, he began to think. He thought about the ladder and the angels. He thanked, I think as he began to pray, his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth. Jacob had to get rid of a lot of things. It had all been Jacob. As he got alone with God, he knew it. If you get alone with God, you will find it to be a place of revelation. Jacob was left alone, alone with God. Because in the secret place, it's a place where God is real with you. And we are real with God. Just like Adam and Eve, we stand there and we recognize the areas that we want to cover. But we've got to come and say, God, I want to cover these areas because I recognize the person that I was. And I'm ashamed. And I'm embarrassed. And we have to say, God, but I open up and I trust them to you. And I'm not going to run anymore. I'm not going to cover. I'm not going to pretend. But in your presence, I need you. And I'm going after you because if I don't get the blessing from you, I can't face this situation. I can't overcome because in me there's a weakness and the enemy knows it. Every time I stand, I fall because I'm weak, but I need to come to you. But I can't come while I'm covering. I can't come when I'm ashamed. I've got to come and throw myself on the very mercy, on the blood of Jesus. I have to allow the Holy Spirit of truth to come and convict me, not condemn me, but to so change me and transform me. Smith said this, we stay too long with our relations, our camels and our sheep. Jacob was left alone. Hour after hour passed. He began to feel the presence of God, but he still had not received the desired blessing. You've got to get alone. We like, and so often, our Christian walk is simply our church time. And that's good, but it's not good enough. You have to personally build a relationship with the Lord when no one's there. So that when I come to church, when I gather with believers, it goes to a new level. And there's power when we stand together. But our walk in our life is built by what happens behind the scenes. When nobody is looking, when nobody, I'm not impressing anybody. I'm not putting on a show. Look how spiritual I am. I pursue Jesus. He is my living hope. This word that I've been standing on God, the word that I've been reading, it's real or it's not. And I'm going after you, trusting the word is real, that I need to know you, that I've got to have an encounter. Open this thing to me, Holy Spirit. I need his words to reverberate on the inside. 
I need to be like those on the road to Emmaus, where these words burn like a fire on the inside of me, where something changes, something is transformed, and the promises I now possess. This is secret place dwelling. Number four, we must cling to Him. I've often discovered that we let go too soon. Jacob had to wrestle the whole night, and I've thought about wrestling. I've never done it, but I've been in fights, and fights are exhausting. And our muscles begin to ache and fatigue. They want to quit. I'm sure Jacob, many points, wanted to quit, but he said, I can't. There's too much at stake. I can't quit. Your body wants to quit. It wants to sleep. Your body wants to do this. I cannot quit because, God, I've got to get a hold of you. I'm clinging. I'm holding fast. I'm not coming to beg. I'm coming to receive. I'm coming because you are my source. You are my God. You're my refuge. I'm clinging to you. Until I make that living contact, I'm not quitting. Many people, I haven't felt anything. What kind of pressing in? Keep holding fast. We don't do this based on what we feel. We do this based on faith in the Word. And you hold fast and you keep pressing in. Psalm 63, 1. Oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Where I recognize, listen, in a, in a, where there's no water, you're going to die. Where there's no water, you've only got three days, maybe. Three difficult days. You need water. You can go for, without food for a little longer, but not water. And you need to understand that that desperation needs to be in you, that God, if I don't get a hold of you, my time is limited. My life depends on it. The very essence of who I am depends on me connecting with you in the secret place. It's got to get real. I love the encounters and the experience at church, but I want to know you. I want to really know you, be changed and transformed, filled. Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Genesis 32, verse 26. I'm not quitting, God. I've quit so many times too early. I find sometimes praying in the night, getting up in the middle of the night and going after him. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, two hours. I'm not letting go, God. I'm not letting go because I need you. And it hurts because so much of me is being exposed. So much of me is being changed. As I enter in, there's a dealing with me because no flesh can enter. And God begins to crucify and kill the old. Smith went on to say this, and God blessed him. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, which is verse 28. The change of Jacob to Israel was wonderful. Israel, victory at all times. God is building all the time. God is sufficient all the time. And God wants to bring you to the place of victory. God wants to so crucify the old, all those things in you that have been openings, opportunities for the enemy to so defeat you, hold you captive. He's been trying to kill it. And it takes time. It takes a process. And so this pressing in, I may not feel anything, but you do not realize how much is going on and there's a killing in you. There's a death that's going on in you. And if you hold fast, keep going on, there's a breakthrough coming. There's a place where God now speaks life and says, you are no longer the same. Your name is changed. You're no longer the defeat. You're no longer that person that you were, but today you go forth a new person. Today you are in me. 2 Corinthians 3.18 but we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God who said, Light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Face to face. I want a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. No angel can suffice. No experience 
can replace this. It's you, Jesus. I'm after you. I want you. I want to know you. How much of us have known about him? And our whole walk has been built around knowing about him. We've been told and we've heard all these great things, but we've not taken the time to know him, to go after, to see his face, to hear his voice, to know him. I want to know my sheep hear my voice. He also said his sheep hear him call them by name. He calls you by name. He calls you by name and he calls you to come into that secret place that you might know him. Because when you connect and know him, everything changes. And in this hour where it's getting darker and darker, you will rise and you shine when you hear him call you by name and his glory pours into this frail earthen vessel. And now I reveal him through this frail earthen vessel. I know him. I know him whom I serve. I know him. And we share a message not about this distant person that we've heard about, but the one we know. Smith said this, Now, because of this experience, now Jacob had power over the cattle, power over Esau, power over the world. All was in subjection as he came out of that great night of trial. The sun rose upon him. Oh, that God may take us on the same way. When you come out, when you learn how to dwell in the secret place, when you get in there and you cling and you go after and you seek his face, you come and humble yourself under his authority, where he is authority, so I gotta seek him. I can't let go why he's Lord. He is my salvation, he is Lord. Not my circumstance, not how I feel, not what my flesh says, quit, no, he's Lord. I don't quit till he says. I don't stop until he says. I'm going after him. And when you come to this place of complete pursuit and you've surrendered, humbled yourself under his authority, you can now walk with authority. You can now stand in this hour with authority. So no matter what's happening all around, you are kept in him. He is your refuge. He is your fortress. And you're becoming like him kept by him. He now releases the resources of heaven on your behalf. He's a good father and I'm in a position as a son or a daughter to receive all that he has. And now he's able to reveal me as a son or you as a son or daughter, whatever it may be, on the earth. A vessel so yielded, a vessel that's made living contact that glorifies him on the earth in this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray this message blessed you. We're going to continue talking about the secret place in this new series where I want to take you through it step by step, share with you from different aspects on the secret place and help you because in this hour you need this. In this hour you need to be found in the secret place of his presence, found secure in him, awake. I don't want to come to the place where he's knocking on the door and he's outside and I've closed the door of my heart to him, but I want him in. I want him to have full possession of me. I want to be found and recognizing that I'm a wretch, naked and poor. And we'll talk more about that in another episode. But I pray this message penetrates, impacts, touches you, blesses you. And I encourage you, like, would you please like, share and subscribe? Because as you do so, it helps us with the algorithms at YouTube to reach more people, to touch more lives, in the precious name of Jesus. Would you also consider joining our prayer partnership? It's easy. The website is below, godsgeneralsandrevivals.com. And then you go to our partner page. It costs nothing. Um, you get invited to our Zoom meetings. You get our newsletter sent by email. And we're setting up a dashboard where you'll be able to connect with other partners and share and talk. You have ministry times in those Zoom meetings, amen? And you have partners and praying for you as you commit to pray for the ministry and for the partners. And I believe there's a day where we'll stand and the reward we get for the life's touch, the backsliders brought back. And those that are brought into the kingdom because backsliders are now stepping up, recognizing who they are in Christ and preaching this glorious gospel. There's a reward for all that. And you share in that in the name of Jesus. I want you to know 
that we are praying for you. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Please check out the whole series, this whole new series on The Secret Place. May it strengthen you. I mean, we're working on a book where we're going to take you through from various heroes of faith, share with you on The Secret Place to bless you, help you in this hour. Thank you. If you want to be part of that, you want to financially support it, great. Again, you can go to our partner page and donate. But I want you to know that we're living in exciting times. It's time for us to rise and shine as a secret place dweller. We know him and we're known by him in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.